<clears throat> well, hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, I want to talk about why you should not buy a tractor if it does not have a front loader on it. I'll quantify that statement here. Just hang with me. Now, a while back, I did a video talking about the best tractor attachment that you could have. And I was talking about the box scraper. I'll link to a video here. But I was, um, I should have prefaced that. It, it was the best tractor attachment for your three-point hitch. Um, obviously, by far, hands down, the most useful tractor accessory you can have is a front loader. The front loader is extremely versatile. It can do a lot of things for you. It can really help uh, maximize your day. It can allow you to do things that you couldn't normally do with just a regular tractor. And it can also get you into trouble at times. Well, one of the obvious uses for the tractor bucket, <coughs> or the front loader, of course, is moving dirt or gravel or, or anything like that. I mean, you're, you're basically taking a tractor and turning it into a small end loader. Um, obviously, depending on the size of your tractor, you can determine how, how much material you can move and the size of your bucket that your tractor can handle, but it really comes in handy for, for moving dirt, gravel, all those type of things. In fact, if you look at the combination of a front loader and a box blade, then to me, I think that's one of the best configurations you can have on your tractor on a small farm like ours, where we don't have all this room to, to have big equipment in, where I can really be able to do a lot of maintenance, do some small uh, landscape changes, you know, different topography, elevation things, maintenance of roads, all those type of things can be done with this configuration. So that's a no-brainer right there. I've used this setup uh, with the front loader, with the box blade, after we had some heavy equipment in to flatten off the land, been able to clear a lot of that up, some of the space back at the retreat we've done, uh, using the, the loader and the, and the box blade, maintaining my roads, of course, Definitely the box blade and the, uh, and the loader come in handy big time there. So there's a lot of, lot of potential use in, in that configuration. Well, another practical use of the front loader is using it as a ladder. Let's say you're really short and you got to get stuff off the top shelf. This will help. Actually, no, I don't recommend this. I will confess, I have used uh, the, the uh, front loader to do that from time to time, but that's what uh, decreases life expectancy. I, I strongly uh, suggest... Not using it as a ladder, but man, if you do have to reach something high, you can get up there pretty easily. In fact, when you take your 20-foot extension ladder in the bucket and lift the bucket up, you can really reach the top of, uh, top of your house, the top of your barn. All that stuff works pretty well. Again, don't try that at home. Well, another benefit of the front loader is it can actually work as a jack for your tractor. So if you have uh, some front wheel issues, flat tire or something you need to take care of, then your tractor bucket can lift up the front of your tractor so you can do some work. Again, I wouldn't recommend doing this and not blocking it up, not having a secondary uh, safety element there. But it does come in handy. Uh, several years ago, when the front spindle went out on my tractor, the right front spindle, it actually went out back up here on one of the pastures, very far away from the barn, very far away from the garage. Where it went. But the uh, beauty was that even though I was on a hillside, I could point the tractor nose downhill, use the bucket to lift it up, and I could service this tractor in the meadow. So I was able to get the spindle replaced, get it all put back together, and get it in the garage and do some final maintenance there. So it does, uh, it's kind of like an impromptu jack. Now along those same lines, using your bucket as a jack, if you find yourself stuck, say in a scenario here where I had a full bucket load of dirt or gravel or whatever, and it was not allowing my wheels, I, I couldn't get up out of there, and I ended up swamping my front wheels and not being able to get out, then I could obviously dump my load and use the bucket as a jack to lift me up. And using the bucket as a sled, of course, I could put it in reverse and simply drive out of that hole. So that's multiple times that's helped me where I've, I've high-sided the tractor on a stump or I've got the tractor down in a ditch or in, in some soupy mud where I just can't get out of it. That bucket has so much surface area and so much displacement there that not only does it lift the front end up, but you can use it almost like a skid or a sled to be able to back out of your, your area that you're in. So it's, it's saved me multiple times from having to find somebody else, a neighbor or whatever, to try to pull me out of the mud. The bucket's lifting me right out of there. 
Now, usually when it comes to the issue of counterweight, usually with a front loader, you need a counterweight on the back end. I've run into situations, in fact, just the video we did two or three videos ago, where Kelly was operating the tractor, lifting up logs, and we had the hay spear on the back that really made the rear end light. In fact, the, the back end was coming off the ground so much that I had her stop so I could put the box scraper on, which is a much more, much more weighty and more of a counterbalance there. But sometimes when you have something really heavy on the back, it's handy to have the counterbalance on the front. So some of you flatlanders may agree, disagree with this, but there's times when I have the hay spear on here and I've got a really heavy round bale and I'm going up a steep hill to uh, take the hay to the tractor or to the pigs or to some part on the pasture. Makes me a little uneasy. That front end starts to bounce a little bit. The front loader itself is pretty heavy, so that serves as a counterweight. If I didn't have the front loader on it and was going up the hill with one of those huge hay bales, then that would be a problem. This 35 horse tractor really isn't big enough to handle some of those bigger bales. But if I really am going up something steep, have something really heavy on the back and feel a little squirrely, then I'll take a uh, bucket load of dirt. Maybe just scoop up a, a front loader full of dirt there and that provides a great counterweight and helps me get up the uh, hill without having a lot of front, front end lifting up there. Well, one other benefit of the front loader that you can use it for is a tree felling assistant. Um, again, not, not my number one recommendation. In fact, in the video uh, footage you're seeing here up at our camp, uh, my dad talked me into letting him use a tractor this way. I, I wasn't too crazy about it. Uh, it it kind of sounds uh, logical, looks good on paper, but uh, bad wind or anything could cause that tree to kick back. But we did use it quite a bit, using the bucket high, to push the tree over as I started it falling to make sure it was going the right direction. Um, but <laughs> not, not the number one recommendation uh, I'd, I would do there. Well, another way we use the uh, front loader on our tractor, of course, with the sawmill as, is as a hoist, our log loader. And using my chain wrapped around the bucket with the grapple from Norwood, that allows me to lift those heavy logs up. It's a great way to be able to pick up those logs and place them on the mill without having the issues of manhandling one of those heavy logs. Now it's a little hard on my bucket, some of you guys have commented on it, and I agree, it, it is some of the things that uh, if I don't do it right or if I get it caught in the bind, it could actually bend and, and change the shape of my bucket. My bucket's not, uh, not coyote, so it's not the heavy dutyest bucket in the world. So that's a concern as well, but it comes in really handy and it's, it's a really good tool for that. Well, the bucket can actually be used as a makeshift forklift. One of my much older videos where we were building the freezer there, you can see that right in front of my, right behind my side-by-side, -side, we used the bucket as a makeshift forklift to be able to lift up the freezer unit, the actual cooling unit, to set it on top of that, uh, the freezer shell. So it came in real handy to lift that. I had no other way of, of getting that up there unless I you know, configured some sort of hoist or whatever. But it was a real handy way of, of getting that unit lifted up and put in place. Now granted, I don't have a quick attach uh, option with this tractor configuration. Definitely something I'm looking into, but if you've got a front loader and it has a quick attach, then you can remove the bucket, of course, by fork, uh, forklift forks. Uh, there's aftermarket accessories where you can buy forks that can be added to your bucket. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually make it a true forklift, uh, but the bucket works as well too. You can obviously uh, engineer some things there and configure uh, different ways of using it as a, uh, a forklift to be able to lift items up. Well, basically, the front loader of a tractor is a much larger and a much more effortless wheelbarrow. So it takes this concept and makes it much, much better. So there's all kinds of things you can do with it. Obviously, um, you can haul wood chips, you can haul sand, you can haul gravel. I've hauled firewood, I've hauled uh, stone. I've even hauled wet concrete, be able to use my concrete mixer, mix up my concrete, dump it into the bucket, and transport it to where I'm, I'm pouring concrete if it's in a peculiar place that I can't get my mixer in. So it really has a lot of advantages to it. So what are the cons of having a front loader on your tractor? Well, one of the obvious cons is the expense. Um, and as I mentioned in the intro, saying don't buy a tractor unless you can include one of these. I know wanting a front loader rubs against your wallet sometimes. You don't necessarily have the funds to be able to get one, but I hear people all the time, in fact one of my friends did the same situation where he was buying a tractor and he was weighing 
okay, do I want a bigger tractor or do I want a smaller tractor, tractor with a bucket? He went with the larger tractor without the bucket. So he went 10 horsepower greater, spent his money there, and he regretted it all along. He said, man, I really wish I'd have gone with the smaller tractor that had the loader. Now he was looking at a 55 horse Zetter or a 45 horse. So he could have afforded the 45 with the loader, said he went with the 55 without. So that's why I say, if you can, if, if you're looking in that situation and your budget allows you, maybe get a smaller tractor or one less accessory or one less option in exchange uh, for the front loader because it's really going to come in handy. Always laugh. There's a quote from Joel Salton. Somebody says, how come you don't have horses on your farm? And he said, until they figure out how to put a front bucket on a horse, I don't want to mess with it. So a front bucket is going to be expensive. If you look at adding a bucket to a tractor of this size, you know, maybe five, seven, even 10 grand, depending on all the accessory elements you get with it. So it's a considerable expense when you look at the whole expense of the tractor. Well, another con, and, and maybe it's not fair to call it a con, maybe it's more of a concern, is most of these front loaders can lift way more than they should, if that makes any sense, or way more than the tractor should allow it to. Uh, this Coyote is, is a perfect example of that. This front loader has a lot of lift to it, so much where I can get the rear end of this tractor off the ground fairly easy, very quickly. Now, obviously, there is an adjustment. I can't actually adjust my hydraulic um, assembly here to, to not be able to lift as much, but I'm hoping for the past so many years, I've hoped that I'm smart enough to know, okay, well, you don't do that. Don't go fast at it. Uh, know when you're going to uh, start lifting the front end, you should be able to feel that. But you can find yourself in a really weird situation or a scary situation where you've got a load of something and bang, you feel the rear end coming up and it's going to meet somewhere in the middle or again on uneven ground, there's a, there's a fear of it lifting up and, and, and twisting, turning around. Flatland, I don't know, you flatlanders have all the luck. But, uh, and I've even showed that, we even talked about that already with uh, lifting logs, using this as a hoist to lift logs, sometimes it makes the rear end light and can get you in a situation there where uh, the front end gets a little, um, um, gets in a low spot, and then wow, you start to feel that uh, back end come up pretty quickly. And along that same notes, that's where a four-wheel drive tractor and a front loader, I really like the marriage of those two because in a situation where you've got a heavy load in your bucket and your back tires are off the ground or they're very, very light, and they're your only drive tires, you could be spinning. So you could find yourself really in a crazy situation where, hey, I need to back out of this spot, I need to, I need to move, but my only wheels touching the ground aren't drive wheels. With, uh, with this configuration, with a four-wheel drive, I've actually had the back tires completely off the ground and it looks like one of those acrobatic dogs kind of walking around in his front paws to be able to get from point A to point B. Again, don't recommend that, uh, but if you're stuck in a situation where you need to, to move, then the front wheel drive or the four wheel drive will allow those front tires to, to have some pull power. Well, probably the biggest con outside of price, of course, is the wear and tear on your front end. All that weight being lifted by the tractor obviously puts more stress on the front end. So you could really find yourself in a situation where your front end, your spindles, your axles, your hydraulics, all of that stuff is going to get more strain on it. I've already replaced the uh, spindle assembly and the, the front axle for this side of the tractor simply because uh, it, it blew apart. It came apart uh, several years ago. I think I did a video of it actually doing the repairs on it. But um, I attribute it to the fact that it, it had a premature death due to all the bucket work that I do. I, I use this front loader a lot, so I expect the uh, efficiency of the loader to rub against the lifespan of the front end of this tractor. So that's something you need to take into consideration. Well, another con, and it's kind of silly, but it's something I didn't realize until I had the tractor and used it quite a bit, is the bucket in its normal position when you're not using it, it blocks your headlights. So when you're driving around at dark doing some other things, your headlights are blocked out. <laughs> my headlights are beat out. But that's why I had to add the light bar here because my front bucket blocked my headlights so much that I, I had this big blind spot when I'd be doing work after dark. Some of you commented and wondered, Troy, why did you put your light bar underneath the roll bar? Wouldn't you have a better angle if it was above it? Yes, you're right, I would, but it wouldn't be there very long because a tree limb would take it right off as soon as I go through the woods.
100 acres to do video work and he mows the grass right beside me. <laughs> so if you're in the market for a tractor and your budget allows, consider getting a front loader. Uh, it's never going to be one of those things you regret. I don't know of anyone that says, man, I really wish I'd have bought the, um, the brush hog or the auger or the tiller before I bought the bucket. I think almost every time you're going to say, go with a bucket. The bucket's going to help you out in so many places. So if it's a toss up between a bigger tractor or smaller, a little bit smaller tractor with a bucket, I'd always take the smaller tractor with a bucket. Obviously, I'd like to have the bigger tractor with a bucket, but again, that rubs against money. All right, well, that wraps it up. Everybody take care.